Stats Net Original Podcast. Can I have a disclaimer? By the way, we're, we're filming this in two different places today. Are you looking at the camera or are you looking at your laptop elsewhere? Oh. Just just so I know, for, am I looking at the camera? Am I looking at the, the laptop? What, what are we doing? I was looking down, actually. Okay. Well, no, you can look down yeah. to read. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. But when we're talking to each other, are we looking at the kit? I mean, you really don't need to hear this. I'm sorry if you're listening right now. Is, is that what we're doing? I'll look at the camera. Look, it was your fault I'll for look at the camera. wanting to bloom and record it all the time. So, you know, right. So we're looking at the camera. No, sorry. Okay. Right. I just think when, when, you know, you've got obviously got a face for radio, hence why you've had such a su- successful career. Oh, I mean, radio. I've never heard I've that before. I've got a face for video. <laughs> I've got a face for video. So uh, we should be. Oh. oh, it's Jen. What? What's wrong? Is she, call- answer. Is she it's calling Jen you? calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. on. But does she re- tell her? She- oh, here you go. Answer it and tell her she's on the podcast. Now, let's see how quickly she okay. turns it off. Hey, babe. Have I just met Roger Blake? You've just met Roger Blake? <laughs> I think it probably is, babe. We might have to uh, bleep some of this conversation out because we're currently uh, recording the podcast. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, sorry. Bye. There she goes. She's like... <laughs> Is she gone? Yeah, she's gone. Record timing. I knew she would go straight away. That's it. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. Um, okay, well, I was going to say something. Oh, yes. So uh, a, a couple of things. The the tech later, um, there's a reason why I've, I've kind of got it, because, uh, but I'll explain why later. But yes, I'm very excited about it. It is one of my favourite mm. things in the world right now. So, so I bet you are. I bet you are. That's cool. And there was something else I was going to say, but I've totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, no, oh, no, I remembered. Yeah. I, I saw something once again on your Insta stories, which we, we need to discuss. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be worried. You know, be, be, be very oh, worried. God. All right. Well, let's come on to that after this. I just want to share a little review uh, that we've had on the podcast. And for those of you who would like to review, it's a massive help. And we love reading them. We do. Especially, uh, especially out on, on air, if that makes sense, on the podcast. So uh, if you want to leave a review, do it on Spotify or Apple or wherever. You usually listen because it's, it's a real help. Um, don't forget to rate and download and share with a friend as well. This is from a guy called ASD Sag SBSU. I don't know how you say any of wow. that. I'm just kind of reading out the letters, so yep. forgive me. Um, but it says this, great listen, really good show, and I look forward to it. But how come it's not weekly anymore? <laughs> JK? I'll tell you how why it's not, it's not weekly. I'll tell you why it's not weekly. Because Al's decided now that we need a visual podcast. So it's it's a lot of time editing video. It's no time at all to edit audio. So I'm I'm blaming uh, that one hundred percent on you. I, right, I would just like to clarify that that was not my idea. It was producer Jack's idea. Oh shut up. You were on board as well. I bet you were. I just do what I'm told nowadays. You think I run this company? Absolutely not. Yes, you do. <laughs> Apparently, I don't even know. Where, whilst we're recording this podcast, uh, there were A-level results last week, weren't there? And I think there are GCSE results coming the following week. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, correct. so um, how did you do in your exams? Now, remember, you're a former teacher. Uh, you do own and run the Dad's Net, along with a load of other great people like myself. Yeah. Uh, how did you do with your grades? My GCSE has got four C's, five B's, and one A star. Okay, would you say that that's decent? Yeah, all passes. Okay, and did those results help you in any way, shape, or form to do what you're doing right now? Literally nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, the o- the only the only thing that they did was open the door to A levels, and then A levels open the door to uni, and then uni open the door to something else. Not necessarily the thing that I trained in at uni, but it does. They do it, like doing well in your exams does open doors to other things, not specific things, but just other things. Okay, did you see the post from Ben Fogel on on Instagram the other day? I did not. Okay, now you know that Jeremy Clarkson always posts on exam results that day, saying that I didn't do very well in my exams, but look at me, I've got I'm, I've got eight million in the bank or whatever it is. Do you, do, yeah. You've seen those posts, okay? So Ben Fogel's yeah. done a post. Um, I did not do very well in in my education at all, and I think I've done okay. Okay, so this is Ben Fogel. A-level results day. Isn't it amazing that in 2022, in one of the most advanced developed countries in the world, that our education systems still distinguish 
the difference between success and failure with a simple letter, A, B or C, or in my case, N and U. I failed my exams, but I argue that exams failed me. Nice. Uh, They crushed my spirit. Let me be clear. Education and exam excellence are vital for those who plan to follow vocational work into the sciences or medicine. Work hard and you will rise to the top of the academia and become the next great doctor or scientist. But it is not one size fits all. We are all not destined to be physicists or brain surgeons. Learning and education are a key in life, but our obsession with exams as a means of testing and qualifying an individual is an archaic as it is broken. There are some people who are better equipped at absorbing and cramming information and, and, and regurgitating it on command. Exams are unfair marker of our talents and ability because they assume that we are all the same. When I took my children, I reflect on their personality, their kindness, their interest, uh, their ability their interact, uh, sociability, curiosity, and thoughtfulness. We are so much more than an exam grade. For many years, my exam grades made me feel inadequate. I felt like a failure despite my ability to excel and achieve in other areas. For me, the pressure or of expectation at such a vulnerable part in my life crushed my spirit. I would rather my children to learn the school of life rather than exams. I'd prefer they learn how to grow crops, cook healthily, and how to do DIY, real life skills. Oh, I've just moved on. Sorry. Exams exams instill a notion of competition too early. If you have failed your exams today, don't be too despondent. We live in a world where there is always another way. And it goes on a little bit more. But I just thought yeah. uh, that really sort of touched me. I, I can really relate to that. And I grew up on a farm. Do you know that? I grew up, have I told you that? I grew up on a farm. I didn't know that. What yeah, kind yeah. of farm was it? Oh, it was, uh, we, we beef, we dabbled no, in No, I'm dairy, joking. I'm joking. Mate, I'm oh, joking. Okay, okay. Well, I thought you were going to know. <laughs> I do agree completely with that sentiment that there is a huge, uh, like, misbalance on exams and exam results. He did, uh, actually, he like, did, I, I, one thing I forgot to put as well is, uh, he then went on to say, the key, of course, are the real heroes, the teachers, underpaid and under-resourced. They should be the pillars of our community teaching for life, not for league tables. The letter of our A-level results does not define you. It's your character that counts. Sorry, that was quite an important bit. And it mentions teachers. Yeah, I mean, I do understand that. And I do completely agree that it is, out, like I say, out of balance. But you have to draw a line in the sand somewhere, don't you? Yeah. And you, and you, there are only a certain amount of resources that we can offer children on a mass scale. So you've got to think that he's absolutely right. And he is involved in his kid's life and he probably is teaching them about crops to grow and farming and, you know, the school of life. There's a lot of kids whose parents don't do that and they barely even talk to them, let alone try and educate Mm. them. So for those children, school is the only way of educating. That's on a mass scale. Can't learn to grow Grow, grow crops of that so there's a, there is an element here where that's a that is a good that is i do completely agree with his opinion but for the for a lot of people around the nation that's not that's not a reality and and when you're delivering something on a mass scale you have to draw a line somewhere and that's kind of what an exam does in a way draws a line somewhere like there's there's no kind of qualms about it yeah not everyone needs to learn how to do uh, physics or chemistry or algebra. No, like I haven't used any of that stuff in a long, long time. But I have used the skills I learn in my physics class in the job I'm doing. I'm not doing physics, but in terms of like, here's a question. Now you need to prove that question and test it. And is it a fair, you know, there are elements that I learn in that, that I do apply elsewhere. And it's yeah. the application that school gives you. And that's what they're testing in these exams. And Everyone needs to learn to read. Like, you do. You need to learn to read and write. You don't need to learn to read and write physics. But you might, you do need to learn to read and write other stuff. So, like, from that point of view, it is way out of balance. And I'm dreading Ted um, and Isla going through that. Although Isla's pretty more, she's quite more robust than Ted is. But I'm dreading them going through that system because I do think it is completely out of balance. But people like, uh, you know, Ben Fogel, me, you, we do balance it a lot more with our own kids. Yeah. And I guess the state needs to balance it a little bit more as best they can. Do you think they're right now that we are, we are examining our kids far too early? Uh, yes, I, yes, I do think that. Uh, you know, there's a there's a year one phonics test, 
Um, I mean, I have a massive issue with phonics anyway. <laughs> Like, I'm happy to talk about that on a, on another day if okay. you'd like to ask me. I'll, I'll note or, that or reach, reach out on social media. I'll have that conversation with people. Um, so I have a bit. So I do think there. I do think there is a. I mean, there's a problem with the education system. I do fundamentally agree that there is a problem with the the, the education system. Where we are, what we need to be teaching, and what we need to be examining, is not knowledge. Like that's the problem. We're, we shouldn't examine knowledge. We should examine children's ability to acquire knowledge. So it's almost like in that exam, I think you should do exams at a certain age, but in the exam, you shouldn't be saying like, do you know uh, this fact about physics? I don't know I'm talking about physics, but do, you know, we don't, they don't need to know the fact about physics. They need to know how to find out the fact about physics. Yeah. If they want to go into physics, if they want to go into sports, they need to learn how to write, you know, solve the problems to get to where you want to be. That's what we should be teaching our children. And yeah, of course, we can use physics and we can use biology and we can use the Romans and history and geography and all of that to get to that point. But the education system is based around knowledge and it shouldn't be based around knowledge. It should be based around how to find out knowledge, skills based, not knowledge based. There we go. Mic drop. Let's move on. Here's a confession. <laughs> so welcome to the uh, the confession, the Don't Tell Your Mum confession. This is where a dad seeks forgiveness from myself and Al and, of course, you uh, listening. Something that they've probably done and um, they're, they're not too happy about it. They feel guilty. And believe me, if you've listened or not listened to... to previous episodes please do we have had some amazing absolute corking confessions uh let's hope today's is the same what we got yes yeah, good and this one is a bit of me this one is a bit of me it's from right. a guy called anthony and then in brackets he's put tony <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> it, just made, it just made me laugh like <laughs> Just to clarify, I don't know why you. Yeah, it's like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not. It's not like we're going for beers and like you want to tell me like I need to tweet Tony, but your name's Ant. Like I don't. I'm not responding, Tony. <laughs> but fine. It's Anthony, um, but you can call me Tony. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. The other day, just quickly, um, I was at uh, I was at a festival. We'll come to that later. And uh, this Tev started playing with this other boy and discovered that this other boy is called Teddy so his dad was there putting up a tent and I said oh his name's Teddy as well um and uh and he went yeah 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 well his name's Edward but we call him Teddy and my response no word of a lie was ah oh, his name's Teddy just Teddy <laughs> so I don't have to say his name's Edward but we call him Teddy <laughs> Anyway, anyway, Anthony, Tony, Tony Anthony, <laughs> like whatever. Uh, dear JK and Al, you guys crack me up. So I try to tune in each week. And one of the recent confessions reminded me of two linked incidents that happened when my son was four years old. Do you remember those little tyke red and yellow cars? Yes. yes. I mean, in, everyone. In, <laughs> in fact, my kids were playing with those just last week at a play park, an outdoor play park in Kent. And they still love them, pushing each other. So, yes, yeah. definitely remember them. I mean, I reckon the shares of Little Tykes went up, like, thousands of percent when they released that. Because he then writes, actually, he says, it seems like everyone had one at some point. Anyway, we picked one up from one of those swap shop places, which always amazes me. They're either an absolute gold mine, or you end up with someone else's crap. Completely right there. True. Uh, Anyway, I got it home and my boy really enjoyed playing with it. I'd push him around the garden or up and down the road uh, for what seemed like hours. But one day he went in and I, for whatever reason, thought that I'd try and get in it. No word of a lie, I crammed myself into the little tyke's car and got completely stuck. <laughs> the car fell over, at which point I looked up to see my four-year-old son standing, staring at me. His face was saying, Dad... What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and well, he was right. So my exact words were, don't tell your mum about this. <laughs> right? 
He goes on. I wriggled out and another and had another brainwave. Now at this point, I should have realised that today was not my day, and I should give up, go to bed with a whiskey. We all have regrets. <laughs> I proceeded to tie the little tyke's car to a rope and the rope to the back forks of an old mountain bike. <laughs> my, in my head, it was such a good idea. I popped my son in the seat, and off we went around the cul-de-sac that we lived in. To my credit, he loved it. He really loved it. Until he didn't. <laughs> like with anything, I started to gain a little extra confidence and speed up. And perhaps took a corner a little too tightly. The car toppled and you'd think that the yellow cab might have acted like a roll cage. No, it didn't. My son, f- <laughs> my son flopped out and grazed his face down one side. He was fine before anyone states the obvious about how irresponsible I was and isn't scared of isn't scarred for life now being a decent nine year old. So there I was saying, "Don't tell your mum twice in a matter of thirty minutes." <laughs> Fantastic! Fantastic! Oh, what a legend! I, I, I'm sure right now we we need to insert a picture of uh, said grown-ups that have tried to fit into a, a uh, little tyke's car and have have got stuck. I'm sure there's plenty doing the rounds on the internet. We we should definitely insert one just so you can have a rough idea what it looks like. I think. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's uh, that is a bit of me though. That confession because. I, that's the kind of thing that I would go, oh, I've got a good idea. Hey, Ted, sit in that. I'll tow you around on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely would do that. You're the kind of guy that takes your kid axe throwing. So you you would. You would do that. Yeah, that did happen. That did happen. It did. Uh, I wasn't naked. Did you see it on Instagram? What? what the uh, The axe throwing? Yeah. Yes, I did see that. Anyway, anyway, you saw us axe throwing at a festival this weekend, right? So, what else did you see on Instagram? And then I'll talk to you about the festival. Well, uh, shall I just pl- shall I just play it? Because oh, actually, okay. it does need an introduction, and the introduction is so it, it's another legendary Insta story from our. We've we've played a few in previous episodes. This is involving an erection. Should we watch it? Yeah, go on. Oh God, what is it? Your face there, picture. Here we go. So the lady that sold this van to us and her husband were unable to get this in there with the poles. I did it first time. <laughs> and that's why you married me. That's why you married me. That's a metaphor for why you married me. <laughs> it's a metaphor for why, if you don't want me, anyone would. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i was in stitches when i watched this what i love as well is that as you'll see if you watch the video which is going to take me nine hours to edit but you'll see that al is is topless he's got a cap on and this is the camper van that you bought obviously so i take it that it was sold with a tent is that why you bought it <laughs> yeah well no <laughs> it, that's the it was the awning of the caravan of the tent oh, okay of right the, it was the awning of the camper van yeah so okay. you can you can put the awning on and then you get like an extra little tent space <laughs> Yeah, and and basically the lady gave it to me in two bags. One was the canvas, all in like a like a drawstring bag. It's yeah. big, and then the other was an, like a comp- entirely separate, unrelated bag with the poles in. And she said to me, "Oh, we can never get the poles in." And I was like, <laughs> "So we just keep them separate." And I was like, "All right." So then yesterday, we've I've never really used the awning before because we only do one nighters, and uh, but this time we did it at the festival. We had three nights, so I had the awning up. And um, sorry, that made me thought, laugh. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> I don't know why. Yes. <laughs> I, I, it was very childish. I apologise. I, I laughed. And I giggled. <laughs> That's all right. So I put the order. So I put the order up. And when I was taking it down, I was like, "Oh, let's just try and get it all in." The lady said she could never do it. Let's try it. it went in first time. I was like, "God, I am." <laughs> amazing if, if you just joined us at that point in the podcast i mean that could have been anything that could mean a lot of things <laughs> yeah the lady couldn't get it all in yeah. so uh, and i said i then get it I all in and she and i got it yeah. all in yeah in one go in one go <laughs> <laughs> anyway but, but yeah. my favorite bit is you at the end when you try and do a metaphor you go so that is a metaphor you obviously lost where you were going and then looked around and went oh yeah and that's why everyone here in this festival wants me <laughs> just yeah. like, what? and jen's yeah. laughing as well it, it, like i'm not i'm not trying to be uh sort of arrogant or anything but i think like obviously observing other men in that situation where they're putting up and putting down tents and camper vans and whatever else i do think i am up there with the best <laughs> of course of, you do 
of doing it. Like, there's so, like, some are like, I don't know, just like, trying to do it backwards, or I, I don't know. I just, I just think I'm, that's a bit of a talent of mine. We found you forte, Al. We found you forte. Um, just, uh, I'll keep looking on Al's Instagram as well, just to find you some, you know, some legendary stuff, uh, just in case you miss it. So, um, leave it with me. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, should I tell you about this festival then, in this little parenting roundup? Yeah. So you, you went, you, you went to Camp Festival, didn't you? We went to Camp Festival in Shropshire. So the festival is it, that's is it Rob DeBanks Festival? Is that right? Yeah, it's Rob DeBanks Festival. It's supposed to be a family festival. Yeah. Right? Now I've worked out what a family festival really means. Okay, <laughs> because there is no such thing as a family festival. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What a family festival is? It's code. It's code for basically saying that this is a festival that parents can bring their kids to and no one will judge them. <laughs> <laughs> okay? That, that's what it's code for. You can come, you can get pissed, you can, like, keep your kids up all night whilst feeding them God knows what, no one will judge. Now, okay? you, you sent me a video, didn't you? Yes. And this was, this was bonkers. This summed it up, right? It was this lady in head to toe in sequins and she's dancing. She's having a great time. She's really enjoying herself. Okay. And then imagine your eyes are a camera, right? They pan down. Okay. And like three meters away from her sat on the ground is a two year old with, with ear defenders on playing in the dirt. (laughs) But that's what kids like to do. I, I'm not denying that, but like, if anyone is telling me that that is a family festival, it's not. <laughs> She's having a great time. The kids being ignored, playing in the dirt. Uh, That's w- not a, that. That isn't like that isn't a family festival. That's an adult festival where no one is judging her for ignoring her kid for an hour. We're big fish, little fish. There, the rave thing. I, I did see them. Yeah, I did see them on the thing. I've done that before in Margate. I think they that that was fantastic. Okay, but yeah. w- but would you would you recommend it? I I I I would love to go. I think I think my kids would absolutely love that. Okay, let me paint some other pictures for you, J.K. Before you commit. Okay. Okay. I, we did about twenty five thousand steps a day. Wow. Right. Whilst towing, right, a buggy. Not a buggy, like a, what do you call it, a trolley type thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Filled with stuff that we didn't use for the whole day. Okay. Okay? All right. Right? That's the first thing. 25,000 steps with an eight-year-old is just on the cusp of hell. Yes. Okay? Imagine if they got a younger kid, right? Right. Um, food. Okay? I, Teddy's sometimes fussy right but they have every cuisine under the sun in this in these at these places of course they do right my my heaven but there is not a meal it's not even a meal there is no food you can buy for less than 11 quid right (sighs) there's four of you every meal minimum 45 quid that's just okay now obviously you can bring your own stuff right so for maybe the, the you know when you arrive maybe day one you can survive off of the food you brought three days in no you can't okay yeah now Ted, the only thing he would eat out of all of these different places was a pepperoni pizza with no cheese and he'd pick the pepperoni off. Okay. Right? They, they charged me 16 quid. <sighs> yeah, right? Food, showers, toilets. Everyone knows festivals are grubby, right? Yeah. And everyone complains about the showers and the toilets being grubby. Yeah. So don't go. God, you sound... Like I, I, I kid you not. I saw a mum cleaning her one and a half year old, two two year old's bum with a leaf. <laughs> Mate, a dock leaf, legendary. That's what I what, used to no, do. It, I don't know if you know. But an, I grew up on a farm. It, That's what I used to do. <laughs> no, a dock leaf would have been kind of fine. It was an oak tree leaf. <laughs> It was an oak tree leaf. It was crispy. It was crisp. I was like, you can't wipe his bum with. An oak tree leaf. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not family friendly. <laughs> Is it? No. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. It's not family friendly, right? The last thing, timings. If it was family friendly, why would you put Fat Boy Slim on at 10.30 at night? Well, I think okay. I, th- I think bedtime goes out the window with these festivals, I think. Okay, but yes, no, you're right. It 
like from an adult's perspective, bedtime goes out the window. But kids still want to fall asleep by nine, half, nine, ten, right? Yep. So this is what happens. Let me paint a picture. You've got the main stage and all these adults ready to, to listen to Fat Boy Slim, okay? The kids fall asleep at their feet on the picnic rug, okay? <laughs> yeah. Then Fat Boy Slim stands at the front and says, right, let's have a jumping competition. See who can jump the highest, okay? <laughs> so then you've got most, a lot of parents, some complete completely leathered, some half cut, trying to jump as high as they possibly can, inches from their kids' heads. <laughs> it is not safe. Like, <laughs> like, okay, so let me let me let me just paint the picture. A festival is a really good option if you want to go through all of those different things and still try and have a nice time. It's a really good option, okay? Yeah. Camp festival. And there were moments where we really enjoyed as a family. We really enjoyed some of those moments, but it is not, I wouldn't ever say that a festival is ever really family friendly. Are you renaming it Camp Best of Feral? Yes. Yes, I am. There it is. Okay. Right. I'm done. Sorry. Uh, should we move on to some tech perhaps? <laughs> yeah. Have you got any new tech? Shh. Don't tell your mum. Uh, right, before you get into making me seriously jealous, um, just, a, just a flag, once again, the MPB uh, sponsors our tech session at the moment, and they're a fantastic online buyer and seller of camera equipment. So they'll buy your old camera equipment, and you can buy new one off of them. Um, it's really good. It's all reconditioned. There's loads of different levels of quality and things that you can look into. Anything from camera bags to DSLRs to action cameras, check out mpb.com because it's where we get all of our camera equipment for here at dad's net so check it out mpb.com filming on a sony cybershot 6 right now this is what i got from mpb just thought i'd say that throw that in uh right we are talking about the delonghi la specialista maestro today this is a absolute beast all right beast <sighs> yeah go on so I saw one review on this saying, this machine combines classic style with sophisticated features to produce a hands-on coffee experience. And they are absolutely bang on. Now, there is there is a reason why I've always wanted this. I've never really been a coffee person, but there is one main reason, which I'll come to at the end, why I, I wanted this machine and how I kind of got this machine, if it makes sense. So um, mm -hmm. this one is it's stainless steel. You can get black or red housing. The black trim looks just so chic and really, really high quality. It gives it that sort of retro cool look. And this this is gonna look amazing on any kitchen counter, all right? It doesn't matter what the state of your kitchen is. This is just gonna up your kitchen game straight away. Um, right, so like, like the older machines, I don't know if you've seen the older machines, uh, not much has changed really. The general layout of the uh, La Specialista. So on the left, it's all about sort of processing the coffee beans, grinding, dosing and tamping. We'll come back to the tamping word in a minute. And on the right, um, everything revolves around the espresso extraction and the steaming milk, the foaming of the milk. Okay. Mm. All right. So I'll, I'll put some pictures alongside this and some, some video footage yeah, as well. I'll, I'll... I've got it in front of me and it looks, it oh, does look good. It's just, it's it's an investment. It's not cheap, okay? It's an investment, but I'll come on to that in a second. Features, eight grinding levels, drinks presets, including espresso, Americano, flat white, which is usually what I go, usually flat white or espresso, latte, macchiato, easy for me to say, cappuccino, and just a, a regular coffee. There's a hot water function as well if you just wanted a cup of tea for your tea bag. Auto tamping, come back to that. Use a profile, so this will always remember your favourite ratio of bean quantity, grind, and water supply, all right? So once you've found that perfect, perfect brew, then you can save it. Adjustable water temperature, uh, automatic milk frothing as well, removable water tank, and the, dimi the dimensions on this, it's about 18.5 inches... Uh, I think that's, is that height? Yeah, height is 18.5 inches, width is 14 inches, and the depth is about 16.5 inches, okay? So it's not too big, and, and it still looks, it looks pro. Um, mm. So with this thing, it takes a while to get used to, okay? It, it's it's a brilliant beast, and I'm sort of just really getting into it now. There's there's lots of stuff which is automatic too, which, which, is, which is great. How you're looking at it now, what are your first impressions? I mean, it looks pro. It looks nicely designed. It looks like it would produce a very nice cup of coffee. 
you 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 do have to be into your coffee to go for this. Well, like, you say this that. Is not... You say that. Uh, there's auto functions, so all you have. No, to... no. What I mean, what I mean is from a price point. Oh, okay. You from yeah. Like yeah. no, I mean realistically, no one's going to spend that amount of money and press auto. Right, let me do a quick process for you, right? So you pour your coffee beans into the bean holder. You set your grinding and dose levels to your liking. You choose the coffee setting you want. Okay, I usually go espresso or I'm a bit of a flat, oat milk flat white. I know, yeah, I sound like a right, yeah. Uh, grab the porter filter. Right, you're in- moving to Shoreditch. <laughs> grab a porter, <laughs> you grab the porter filter, which is the big sort of, it, it's, it's a big clump of thing and uh, you insert it into the bean dispenser then you move it to the right and it grinds automatically which is quite cool you use the smart tamping lever to pull it down and then you pull it back up again and you do it a couple of times it feels like you're in a casino playing on those um, those machines you know what i mean it's like that it's yep. a bit like that yeah uh, you, in- you don't win you don't win uh, insert the porter filter into the coffee outlet then either use the automatic milk frothing and the milk container or steam manually with the steaming wand, which if you want to be a bit barista style, that's the kind of thing you do. Right, yeah. so this is my advice if you plunge into the amazing world of, of proper coffee in a proper coffee machine like this, okay? Take your time. That's the first thing. Make small adjustments, okay? Just do one thing at a time. Get used to it. I've also tried different beans, some great, some not so great. I found one at the moment which I really like, which is um, it's Lofberg's Brazil Medium Roast Coffee Beans. Great for the optimal zone as well. But it, this is all a, a learning process. Now, this is the reasoning, okay? Reasons to buy this beauty. The main one for me was we're about to do a kitchen refurb, all right? So this was absolutely, it had to be in the budget. And as you get older, I'm sure a lot of people are, are like me right now. I just want a decent kitchen. I want an island and I want a barista-style coffee machine sat on the kitchen top. That's all I want, Al. That's it. It's all I want. <laughs> Simple. I don't. Simple I don't life. want. The, I don't want the fast cars anymore. I don't really want that much more technology. How much tech can one guy get? I just want a nice kitchen, an island, and a decent coffee machine. It's all I want. Yeah. Although, right. To be fair, if you do go down that route, then our tech feature is going to need rethinking. <laughs> I'm still interested in tech. Mo- all right. Move it to a kitchen feature. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we'll lose listeners. <laughs> okay. So look, if you are thinking about, you know, sort of refurbing and stuff like that, just set a bit of budget aside for this this coffee machine. Look, it could be a birthday thing. It could be a joint Christmas present. You know, it could be something like that. Um, it's Yeah, I mean, realistically, if you are going to spend 15, 20 grand on a new kitchen, spending six, 700 quid on a new coffee machine. Might need to be a bit more than that. Just, just a little bit more. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm picking the, I'm, the, the average. The average. You can go higher. You yeah. also can go cheaper. Okay. Well, look, it's, it's such a high quality appearance. It heats up really quickly. Really great steam one pressure as well, which actually is very important. A sexy, silky, fine milk foam. Oh. Even with oat milk. Oh, oh yes, especially with oat milk. Oatly, um, which is the, the barista one, which is our favourite one, and the Alpro barista. I mean, all plant milks are fantastic in this. And finally, look, it looks so chic in your kitchen. When you get your couple friends round, you know, your favourite couples and stuff, as soon as they see this at the, at the house party, they're, they're just going to they're gonna think of you in a different way. They're going to think you've got class, you've yeah. got style. I should hang around yeah. with this guy. I should hang around with this guy more. Are they going to think that, or will they just think, God, this guy's a coffee They b-. might think the latter as well. But, but remember, <laughs> look, look. Nothing wrong with being a coffee b-, just for the record. Look, my wife, put it this way, my <sighs> wife says, I love my DeLonghi machine more than I love her and the kids. And <laughs> True. What, what, <laughs> well, Al, it's beautiful, makes me happy, gives me a boost and doesn't answer back. So, you know, what more do you want? Exactly. Tastes good. Sorry, can I say that? Yes, you can. Of course you can, yeah. Because it's a, oh, yeah, good. we're talking about the DeLonghi La Specialista Maestro, and the uh, the link will be in the description. But trust me, it, it it's an investment that you you won't regret. And if you love coffee, trust me, it's it's brilliant. Go for the joint birthday present, or go for the kitchen renovation. That's how you get this beast. All right. All right. Well, it will be on my list for quite a few years. I fear. Do we not need one in the office? It, I we do business expense. A, business <laughs> sorted. We've done it. <laughs> Yeah, let's get our creative accountant on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's very good. We don't mind paying him. He's very good. <laughs> mm, 
I wish, I wish. Um, that's very good. Thank you very much. I, I am very envious because I just looking at the pictures kind of, I mean, I, to be honest, I'm just looking at the pictures. <laughs> like I'm literally staring at the pictures. <laughs> it's a beauty. Uh, it's a beauty. Um, thank you very much for listening uh, for another episode of Don't Tell Your Mum. I'm on holiday next week, so I'm not actually sure whether we're going to be doing well. Uh, we might have to skip a week. Okay, um, sorry. It's Al's fault. I told you it was Al's fault, didn't I? Yeah, but you know, uh, but then kind of, kind of, come September, we will be back into the swing of things. Um, yeah. It's kids, kids are the problem. They are. Um, but thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to rate, download, subscribe, uh, share us with your friends. That's a massive help to get extra listeners. So please do just uh, send the link to a couple of mates, put it in your WhatsApp groups, um, give it a listen, and we'll speak to you soon. Remind me next time that we, we do the podcast to tell me about your mate that you met at a party regarding the, uh, the tech feature. Remember? For that as well. Oh, yes. Because that's yeah. 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 We, it, right. it, put it this way: it, it's it's something that gives me warmth and and just a lovely feeling inside when you know that when you do something, people take notice. Nice. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. This will be the ultimate test. I'll go around his house in a week and I'll see what coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Have a good week. <laughs> see you, mate. That's net original podcast.